Well, this is Down to the River and uh, your host Scott here on the line with uh, the man, myth, and legend himself, Dave Gunning. How are you doing today, man? Great, Scott. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> Great, Scott. <laughs> hey, I didn't realize that. <laughs> well, now listen, uh, you are uh, just uh, going strong here with uh, your Up Against the Sky uh, record, which came out, uh, I think, back in March, if my information is correct. Yeah, it came out on CD there back in March, and um, we just uh, put it on vinyl just uh, a couple weeks ago. That's right, that's right. Well, now, is releasing something on vinyl, I mean, is that sort of in your wheelhouse? Like, are you up on, uh, you know, vinyl as a sort of re-emerging technology? Is that why you're why you're doing that? You Like, your fans are sort of, you know, wanting this? Yeah, well, I, I, I guess... Um, there had been a few requests for it, and it's something that I had wanted to do for a couple of years. Like I, I do listen to vinyl myself, um, and then I uh, recorded this record with vinyl in mind. So when we uh, at the onset, we we used uh, a lot of room mics and different recording methods that were more. Right the way that they used to do it years ago. Like if something was too loud, we moved it farther away from the mics. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, so it kind of gave it a nice sort of roomy vibe. And we, you know, the the goal was to knowing that it would end up on, on vial. So it was, it was mixed and mastered, recorded, mixed and mastered but with that in mind. And just really kind of thrilled with how it turned out because it, it de vinyl definitely does sound different. There's no question. And I listen. I actually listened to it for the first time last week at a friend's place. Like he's uh -huh. got a really great setup. And, um, at the JP Cormier down just I was near Middle Musket so We went down his place and um, <clears throat> cranked it up there one night. And right. yeah, it was kind of neat to hear it on vinyl. Yeah, well, a lot of a lot of people talk about how there's a sort of warmth to the sound and a bit of a gritty sort of uh, organic feel and vibe, which I suppose, you know, would support or be supportive to, uh, you know, the, the roots and, and folk genre, right? I mean, you know, just hearing that the warmth of the acoustic guitars and so on and so forth. Yeah. And almost like a, like a third dimension, like it's almost like you can see into the, the mix a little bit somehow uh -huh. and and it's a higher resolution too you know so you're you're i guess oftentimes the streaming when people are streaming music it's the resolution can be quite low you know a, C, a cd is often better quality like but then the vinyl like they work from from like hot the highest resolution that you know it was recorded it's all it's, it's uh you know so a cd might be 16th 44 uh -huh. one whereas the, the vinyl was taken from 24 bit 88.2 kilohertz or something right so yeah yeah it's a so it's a yeah it was a pretty yeah it's kind of, it's just it was really kind of neat to hear us yeah well now does releasing something on vinyl kind of affect your songwriting process because i mean there's so only so much room that one record has on it right yeah you're like i i kept it to 10 cuts um but in in a way I think that maybe that's the trend. Like, some you know, no one likes somebody who talks too much. For example, <laughs> so I figure I figure I just put out like I just put out ten songs and yeah, yeah. and uh, and it's it's enough. You know, it's a nice chunk of music, and you know, it's, it's I just thrilled that you know we, we've got people that are willing to listen to a whole bunch of, of new material. You know, to, to begin with, so. But it, it works, yeah, so there's five cuts on each side, and and if you put too many songs on a vinyl record, then the sound quality is reduced because the uh -huh. grooves have to be closer together. Yeah, that's and, right. And uh, the, the needle doesn't set down as deep into the grooves, I guess. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, well, yeah. Well, now, one of the songs that you're uh, just, uh, you know, in the process of releasing as a single, of course, is is Ferris Wheel. So, I mean, just, just tell us a little bit about that uh uh, Dave, I mean, I uh, just, you know, how you went about writing it, what the uh, inspiration was for it, and so on and so forth. Yeah, well, I actually co-wrote that one with a good buddy of mine, Jamie Robinson. Uh -huh. And we, like, I've, <clears throat> I have always loved the, we were, I was, we wanted to write something that was kind of fun. And I've always loved my, you know, favorite rides. Or certainly one of them was the Ferris wheel. And I think just, I don't know, maybe 
when I was back in four and eight years ago, uh, you know, I think I was, I was actually in calf club. Uh -huh. <clears throat> there, there I go bragging again, <laughs> <laughs> but it was just kind of fun. It was like the one-on-one -on -one opportunities that can present themselves on a Ferris wheel is somewhat different than a lot of other rides, you know? Sure. And, uh, it just, uh, I, I just love the, I remember the old, you know, they'd often be powered by, by a tractor motor, just kind of purring away, you know? Yeah. And, and yeah, you don't, we don't have the Ferris wheels coming out of Atlantic Canada anymore for some reason. I don't know what the issue is, but, but, um, there's one over in Prince of Rhode Island that's permanently set up in a place called Sandspit. So uh -huh. you just kind of go over, still go over there and ride them. I don't know if you guys get them out west of them and the, carnival's coming around anymore um you know uh, maybe in a more big box type situation where you've got something sitting for an extended period of time i mean they got to fit them on those trucks yeah. and they got to travel around so i mean i guess then yeah. again you know you'd have to get into an environment too where you'd put down for a certain amount of days and then you know the next place you'd go you'd probably have to put down for a few more days sort of to make it worthwhile right yeah and i guess that's probably the issue a cost issue yeah but uh, anyway, I kind of miss the old Ferris wheels. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was just, uh, well, I mean, they, you know, they gave you a chance when you got up to the top to, you know, you get a bit of a view of the town or whatever. And if you have a gal yeah. next to you, you know, it can there's a certain amount of romance that could be involved in a situation like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's uh, it's a, oh, good all around, you know. Yeah, well, now when you sit down to write a song of this nature, I mean, you know, what's uh, what's what's going on? You know, the the vibe between you and Jamie. Well, just talking about, sort of joking about all the different things about the Ferris wheel, kind of just uh, you know, just start talking about it, writing down some some phrases and some some kind of cool ideas that pop out yeah and then it's just kind of getting a bunch of raw material sort of hashed out and then just kind of build or just assemble it like a ferris wheel i guess <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah well now how do you go about deciding what key a song's going to be in and you know what chord progression you're going to use ah that that changes like sometimes the the key will will change you know five times while you're writing it oh let's move the capos <laughs> you know or, or let's change it to this key or and then the chords, it's it's not, um, you know, uncommon for me to have like three different versions of a song with di with a different slightly different melody or slightly different chords until I settle on something that just locks in. Yeah. And then and then you set out to record it, and oftentimes it will change again. Huh. You know, until you, you're just sort of trying to you're trying to beat it out of the out of the the closet or something you're trying to f just like what are you what what you know and sort of try to approach it from different angles and just and trying to find out where it just feels the best yeah and um what was cool about this recording is that i thought all these songs were going to be demos huh. so i wasn't really i wasn't really putting much pressure on myself and i think at the end of the day it i ended up um with something a little bit more relaxed sounding because i just thought hey I'm just going to get these demos recorded. Right. And, and maybe that's the secret. I just have to kind of like take that approach every time, like not take it too, too seriously. And I think that when you, if you're a little bit more relaxed and think, okay, there's no big pressure. That's just, that's just a version, right? I can do this again or whatever. And then, uh, it just, it, it just, it made the whole recording more relaxed and I, I sang better. I played looser and I, I wasn't taking it too seriously and it we ended up with something that just was a better sounding record in the end yeah yeah well now speaking of of the record and the vinyl you're you know sort of in the midst of a bit of a tour of the east coast but then you're headed out west i think i saw there was uh, a house concert in north battleford yeah north battleford i'm doing a solo show there and then i'm at uh, jessica and mike's place and <laughs> Then I'm blasting out to Edmonton to pick up my bass player who's flying in. So I'm picking yeah. up the airport. We're playing a show in Edmonton, then we're blasting down to Calgary for for a show there, and then heading home. So nice. kind of three shows and three nights, and then and then back back home to continue some more um, shows in Atlantic Canada. Yeah, up into uh, um, up to well, basically November. Then I've got a little bit of downtime in November, and then and then starting up. Uh, a run of some shows around here with J.P. Cormier just in December, yeah. leading up to the holidays, so it's going to be fun. 
Yeah, you're keeping yourself busy. Well, now, you know, just just to wrap up here, I mean, I've always wondered now, like, in, in terms of, like, you know, the house concert circuit, I, I mean, you know, are, are Jessica and Mike, for instance, I mean, are, are these, like, longtime fans and, and, you know, they've seen that you're out west and, you know, you, you have that conversation about your booking fee and, hey, you know, how does the house concert work, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, how, how do you end up getting booked for these things, Dave? I, I think that Jessica and Mike... Um, we're big supporters of, uh, of a network called Home Roots, um, which was founded by Mitch Bedolik and now um, is run by his son, Leonard. And, and I think Tim still works for them, too. They're out of Winnipeg. Uh-huh. And I think that they, they founded this network. And I think Jessica and Mike um, sort of tapped into that and started putting shows together. And they really liked doing it. And I think that um, now that they, now they do... Um, They'll do um, house concerts, um, you know, both in and outside of of that Home Roots network, just right. kind of carrying it through. And and um, but that's it, I I don't do a ton of house concerts, but I I do I have played their house um, um, four times, I think. Wow! And uh, so it's it's some it that that's become uh, sort of regular. They become friends and yeah, and um, they're they're just they're awesome people and. And they've they've got a, a great network of um, of friends that like they they can basically book shows now I think and they've become tastemakers. Their friends have sort of trusted them to um, they'll, they'll go out, their friends will go out to, the, to see whoever they're presenting now. Huh. But we usually get a real good crowd now. We'll play there. It's usually, you know be pretty full up and and just a great yeah just a great hang with them. They're awesome people. Yeah. So um <clears throat> and that's the the. House concert circuit definitely um, is something that like it's become you know more popular throughout the entire country, and huh. I I do some from time to time um, if it makes sense, kind of if it connects some of the the other sort of um, larger anchor dates. Yeah, and um, it just uh, yeah it's made it's made touring more viable for a lot of artists. Like it's, it's the house concerts have become very important for. For a lot of artists in Canada, a lot of artists are doing exclusively doing house concerts. You know, so it's it, it's a, it's incredible how important they have become. Huh. Well, that's interesting, Dave. Well, listen, Dave, I don't want to keep you much longer. So uh, you know, I just want to say uh, th- thanks for coming down to the river with me today, man. It's uh, it's been a nice uh, nice little hangout. Yeah, anytime, Scott. I pre- it's it's awesome. I appreciate being on the show. Uh, <laughs> I love listening to your shows. I've been listening to quite a few of them there on the the podcast so oh nice uh, yeah yeah it's for you yeah you get to, you get some good good people on there <laughs> i appreciate appreciate being on on the show <clears throat> right on well that's very flattering dave uh you know th- thanks for your support yeah thank you <laughs> right on well you know you 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 get out there and and you have a good tour uh you know say hi to jessica and mike for me and uh yeah uh, you, you know and uh k- keep me in the loop of your future goings on man because uh you know i have a feeling that uh you know you're g- you're gonna be a regular awesome buddy sounds good take care scott yep have a good day yep bye bye